Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to go over how to add a text object in the Unity Editor using TextMesh Pro. And then I'm going to go over the basics of the tool. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of these, you know, this pretty title and the background. We're going to create an empty game object, which is shift, well, control shift N. We're going to give it an appropriate name, which is not too creative. Call it TextMesh Pro. We're going to add a new component of type mesh, of type TextMesh Pro. TextMesh Pro uses a custom editor panel. In this panel, basically, we have the area to enter our text. We've got the area for the font settings. And then we've got a custom material editor where we can tweak the shader parameters. First thing we'll notice is TextMesh Pro selected already for us the Arial SDF, which stands for Sign Distance Field Font. TextMesh Pro uses a custom font atlas or assets, um, and I'll go over those later on, not in this video, but in a subsequent video. But this current asset contains a texture, which is basically the Sign Distance Field texture, which is only a 512 by 512, that's 256 kilobytes but let's go back. So it's pretty tiny, but that same texture can be used for an infinite number of permutations and variants of our main text, which we're going to type now. So let's type some text. Um, example of text mesh pro. Okay, let's uh, move the window around so we can see what I typed and let's zoom out a little bit so we can see it better. So here's our text that we typed. As I mentioned, we're using uh, right now the sign distance field aerial font. Um, the advantage of using sign distance field, unlike a bitmap uh, texture, and by the way, TextMesh Pro does work with standard bitmap fonts, but it was specifically designed to take full advantage of sign distance field. Now, full advantage is basically if I zoom into my text, you'll see that, let me center it, as I zoom in, the text remains super clean at any zoom factor, but if I zoom out, it also remains super sharp and super clean when it's super tiny, as you can see here. I'm not sure how it comes through uh, Camtasia, but you know, it's really nice, super tiny. So let's go back to normal size so we can see what we're looking at. So what I'm going to do is we have uh, full support for rich text. So let's uh, make some tweaks on our text. First thing we're going to do is let's make the word example bold. So the way you enter the style tags is basically the uh, smaller than and greater than signs. So you can see here I type smaller than B and until the code is parsed and until we find a valid one, we just allow you to see it. So that way you can actually type a math equation. So so we said bold. Now we have to tell it where bold ends. So bold ends right there. Now in TextMesh Pro, let me actually, little teaser here, but the level of bold, meaning how bold is bold, can actually be modified by the user. So if I go to this custom asset, which is the Arial font, here you can see that I have normal bold, uh, normal weight and then bold weight. So if I mess with the bold weight, you can see that I can make the text bolder. So depending on the font, you know, some fonts you can go bolder if, you know, if they're not too, uh, like in this case, the space between the E and this thing is kind of restricted, so you can't go as bold, and, but some other fonts you can make them super fat and cool looking. Uh, another thing is you can also tweak with the italic slant and adjust its angle, but I digress. Let's go back to our text. So we made example bold. Uh, let's make example bold and italic. So pretty hard. We just go italic, I for italic. Then let's see, uh, what else could we do? We want to add, uh, ah, let's underline example. May as well show that. So again, I didn't say where underline ends, so it goes until the end of the string or the text, and we'll say end underline here. So now we have example underline. Uh, now let's add uh, something like uh, color. We'll make text mesh a color. Now there's two ways you can enter your color attributes. You can go color 
equal something, and there's a few that are predefined. I won't list them because I'll mess that up. But there's a couple defined, like a dozen or something. Um, so now I said color equal yellow, but my preferred way is to basically enter the code, the X code for the color. So yellow is, uh, well, let's not go yellow, but yellow would be FFFFOO, which is yellow, but I don't want yellow. So I'll go A0, A0, FF, which is some kind of purple-ish. Then the word pro will give it a different color. We'll say pro is uh, FF, A0, A0. Oops, wrong thing. FF, A0, A0, which is whatever, kind of a pink-ish. And we want the thing to be white, the exclamation point, which is not a thing, but it's an exclamation point. So there we go. So now we added color. So we have bold, italic, underline with colors. Now, um, this won't make sense, but just for the fun, well, actually that one might. So let's say we wanted to add a trademark uh, after our exclamation point. So we're going to say superscript trademark and we're going to end superscript. So we support superscript and obviously subscript. Uh, and this, that one won't make sense. But let's say it's the chemical formula of, uh, eh, let's add it to uh, of, of something. So subscript three and subscript. There you go. So now we've got subscript, superscript, and the rest of the stuff. And there's one more. Let me get rid of the subscript because it looks goofy after the word of. Now, let's say we wanted to make the letter E bigger. You know, sometimes when a paragraph begins, the first letter is big. So we can enter a size attribute. And size attribute takes two forms. First one is size equals something. So in this case, our current font size is 36. Uh, so let's make this one 48. And now the whole thing is 48 because I never said where that 48 size changes. And then I'll end it here. So now we've got... Let me get rid of the uh, move gadget. So E is basically 48 and everything else is the normal 36 point size that we picked, which makes it look cool. Um, now, again, because we're using sign distance field, I can change the font size dynamically. Now, pay attention to the E. We hard coded the E. We basically said it's 48. So as we resize the font, well, the E will always remain 48, but everything else gets scaled. Now again, our edges remain always sharp and super clean regardless of you know the size of our text, which is the beauty of distance field-based uh, font rendering. Now, I said there's two ways to enter the size attribute. That was the first. The second one is to specify basically, um, instead of saying size equal 48, I'm gonna say size plus, you know, now it instantly jumped to plus 48, but I want like plus, uh, let's say uh, 18. So now our E, regardless of our sizing, will always remain proportionally bigger because we said it's 16, uh, sorry, it says it's 18 bigger than the other stuff, as you can see here. Cool. Now, um, let's look at different stuff. Um, oh, by the way, there's a, there's a, I won't show every single tag, but there's one for tab, and then there's one called position where you can, so tab, you can specify what the tab spacing is, so let's say five characters or ten characters, and it will advance that number of characters every time it finds a tab, and their tab stops, but the position um, tag allows you to specifically position something like at the fifth character or at the tenth character. So those are variable and you can adjust them. That way you can create columns of variable sizes um, if you want. Anyway, so let's uh, go back to a different string so I can keep demonstrating stuff. Ah, nah, we'll keep this one. I'll just add more. So right now we type this in one single line. So we said example of text mesh pro uh, in action. I just made the string a little bit longer. So let's go over these things. So I said font asset right now is Arial. So 
the way you would pick different assets or different fonts. Um, Text Mesh Pro comes with a built-in font creator, uh, so that way you'll be able to take any true type or open type font and bring them into Unity and then select them in our tool and generate either a normal bitmap font atlas or a sign distance field atlas to use with Text Mesh Pro. And that's built in. I'm gonna demonstrate that in a separate video. But anyway, so the ones I've already created just for fun for this example is a few of those. So Arial, so if I click Impact, now our text is Impact. And I'll zoom in so you can see the, the change in the font better. So Impact, Jokerman, which is um, a funky kind of text. And you, I guess you're seeing a teaser here of some of the things you can do in terms of font and text, uh, font treatment and texturing. Let's pick Slate Mobile, which is, it's close to Arial. Uh, again, this is not a demo of font types, but, and then Snap It, which I kind of like. That one's kind of cool, you know. Anyway, so back to Arial. So this is how you select your font. Font size we've already seen. Um, so you can pick whatever font size you want. Now let's show the next thing. Um, character spacing. Well, you can basically adjust the spacing between characters. Now I'm using my mouse, so I, I'm going to squish them really fast. But you can adjust the spacing between each individual letter, not, you know, as a, as a whole. So this allows you to make some little tweaks that you want. Pretty much every parameter that I'm showing right now, right now I'm focusing on showing you how Text Mesh Pro works from within the Unity Editor, but pretty much everything I'm demonstrating is available via scripting uh, through the API. So much like Unity's built-in Text Mesh and you can create a Text Mesh object via script, the same thing happens with Text Mesh Pro. So all these things are dynamic. So let's reset our character spacing. Uh, next, uh, line length, I'm going to cover now, and line spacing. Okay, so uh, these things right now won't make any sense because we have just one line, so line spacing doesn't matter. But if I add, um, actually, let me do that here. So this is entered on one single line. I've never hit return, but if I was to hit return and say other line, not say but type, now I could adjust the line spacing, right, as you can see here. And the spacing that we use is whatever one was, by default, it's the one that was defined in the TTF file. And that spacing line height is right here. And you can actually alter that if the one that was defined in the font was not to your liking, you could tweak that. Also the positioning of the underline, you can also tweak that if you don't like where it stands, you know, uh, in terms of where it's defined in the font. But anyway, I digress again. So let's go back to normal spacing and let's actually get rid of that extra line that I entered. So now we've got one line, no carriage return. Well, I'm gonna turn on word wrapping. So with word wrapping, when it's enabled, this yellow gadget shows up, which allows you to manually define where the word should wrap. Okay, so we'll have it wrap right here. Um, Again, this is available through the scripting interface, but you can either adjust the line length here or adjust it right there. And if you keep shrinking, well, there's a point where we can't shrink anymore, right? And then eventually it gets to be on one line. So again, line spacing is here. And if I adjust character spacing, eventually it has to push the boundaries of the word wrapping because you know it doesn't fit, so it does that. Uh, which is what it's supposed to do. So let's go back and reset this to zero and go back to normal spacing. Okay, next options are a lot more obvious. Um, so line justification. Well, right now it's left justified. Uh, we want center justification. And the, the justification is not based on this yellow thing. That's the thing that defines the word wrapping. So center based on where the last character is and where it, the whole string begins. Right justified, which is right here. And then we have the lack of, for a lack of better term, justified, which I guess is flush, um, as you can see here. Let's go back to left. Your anchor positions, well, basically we have all of them, which is the top left, top, top right, center, whatever. Uh, let's go to center. Now, um, in terms of the center position, if I was to change the size of the font, you'll see that the center position doesn't, it, it kind of seems to wobble. Basically, it doesn't recenter 
it, okay, let me rephrase that. It waits until it's traveled about a third of a character before it adjusts the recentering of the position. The reason why I added that buffering is when you're creating a text mesh object via script, let's say a counter, and you have digits counting like zero, one, two, three, well, the zero is wider than the one, and if you wanted it to be centered, you don't want your center point to keep you know, being readjusted every time there's a new character because then the whole string, you know, moves left to right, moves left to right. So this is added for, you know, little buffering. That way the string is always stable or on screen. And once you get there, I'll show it eventually, but you'll get what I'm saying. Unity does the same thing, by the way, with text mesh. Uh, next option, um, to, to anchor position we covered. Okay, so colors. Um, uh, let me shrink the text back down to 48. Uh, let me make sure Text Mesh Pro is on. Eh, on there we go. That looks nice. Cool. So, font color. Um, this font color here basically is a modifier of the color of the text. So, if I was to change the colors, you can see that I'm tinting them red or green or whatever. But Hopefully you've also noticed that the texts that have a color tag are not being changed. Now the assumption is, well, if you bothered specifying a color tag, why would we override it here? So this doesn't override the color. So it allows you to keep the color but tint everything else. However, there's this, let me go back to a color, a weird one. Then there's this override HTML color, which is if you click it, now it overrides the color tags, therefore tinting the whole thing of the color that you picked. Now there's another color thing, which is if I go in the shader and here, this allows me to specify the color for the face, this tints everything. So it's like a second layer of color changes. So hopefully that makes sense. Cool. Um, next, uh, we have kerning built in. So when you create the free type, not the free type, when you create the true type and the open type font using Text Mesh Pro, you can pick to import the kerning table or not. In this case, I'm not sure I have one, so we won't get to see it in action. Um, and the video is already at 17 minutes, so I'm not going to get into that right now. So the next thing I'm going to do real quick is just show a little bit more about the shader and then I'll end the video and pick this up in a separate one. So let me go back to some text that is white so it looks cool. We'll go into shader. Now next advantage of sign distance field is I can add a border to my text automatically um, which makes it look even nicer. I can even add for example softness to my border. So now I've made the edges softer. And real quick, I can texture the face of the object. So let's pick like aluminum or brushed metal, sorry, as you can see here. And then next, we can change obviously the color of the face as I showed. We can change the color of the border. So let's make it white so we can apply a texture to it. So here I'm going to pick a texture like this one, for example. And now we've created a funky looking font. Let me shrink the border size a little bit because the colorful thing looks nicer with a small thing. And there we go. So I'll end the video here because we're at 19 minutes now. And this gives you a good overview of the basic UI functions of the Text Mesh Pro uh, tool and the custom editor panel. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to post. Thank you for watching.